I'm so excited to bring you God's Word today. And as we get into God's Word today, we're finishing a series. And the series we were in was Love God Well with All Your Heart. With All Your Heart. And what a great series. And today, we start a brand new series, Love God with All Your Soul. This is the soul series. I want to tell you this. We got to have some soul health in this place if we're going to do what God has called us to do. And I want to tell you, we got to have some soul food. You can go get you some soul food at Orlando's. Thank you, Jesus Cafe. You can get that dark gravy and that deep fried goodness. Oh my goodness, I'm starving right now. Anybody hungry? I'm going to make this fast. We're going to get out of here quick. We're going to go eat some food. That's not going to feed your soul. What feeds your soul, what really strengthens your soul is aligning yourself with Almighty God, doing what God has called you to do. So what is the soul? The soul, I want you to get this, is the seat of all your emotions. Okay, the soul is the seat of all your humanity, your human emotions. Whenever your soul is out of whack, everything else just falls apart. But when your soul is healthy, come on somebody, you can do the work of Almighty God. So what I want to talk to you today is one factor that has to do with soul health, and that's alignment. Everyone say alignment. Alignment's crucial. You understand what alignment is and what it's not. When your car is out of alignment, how many of you know that's not a very good ride? And it starts busting up other parts of your car. How many of you know when your back is out of alignment, You're walking a little bit funny, you can't function, and even you start thinking some crazy things until you go to that chiropractor, boom, you're in alignment. You can do what God has called you to do. Today, when I say alignment, I want you to think of aligning yourself with the men and women of God that God has called you to align yourself with, and you align yourself with Almighty God Himself. Turn with me today. The Proverbs 26, 26. All my notes are on the SC Church app. You can type it in Shreveport Community Church and follow along with me today. But this is what the Bible says. It says, their malice may be concealed by deception, but their wickedness will be exposed in the assembly. Aligning in the church of Jesus Christ, I want to tell you what, it will give you soul health. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. Being around other Christians, believers, it gets you in right alignment with what God wants you to do. Proverbs 13 and 20. Walk with the wise and become wise, for a companion of fools suffers harm. The wrong alignment, it gets you out of being the most effective that God has called you to be. So the title of my message today is alignment for a healthy soul. Alignment for a healthy soul. Bow your heads with me. God, thank you for every man, woman, and child in this place. Thank you for SC Church. And God, I pray that we love you, and I pray we listen to your word today. Allow it to wash over us, and allow it to change us. We love you in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, and I gotta coach you on these high fives. Give someone a high five, but a good high five. No weak high fives. First service was terrible. This has nothing to do with my message, but I had a dream the other night, and I hope it's not prophetic. Um, I dreamed that I was preaching, and I had this big room, and everyone was in there, and my notes fell to the ground. And so I bend down, and I just put all my notes in order. When I put them back on the podium, everyone had left. And there was only four people left. So if I drop my notes, I'm not dropping my head today. Okay, I'm keeping my eyes on you. What are we talking about when we say alignment? Well, we're saying being in right standing with Almighty God. There's lots of examples in the Bible of men and women that had proper alignment, and they did the will of God. Countless. There's countless examples of men and women that had improper alignment and they were ruined. It was detrimental to their life. Today, we're going to look at a pattern. We're going to look at one story, the story of Elisha. And this shows us how to align ourselves with what God 
has called us to do. Uh, 1 Kings 19, 19 through 21, the call of Elisha. It's what the scripture says. So Elijah went from there and found Elisha, son of Shaphat. He was plowing with 12 yoke of oxen, and he himself was driving the 12th pair. Elijah went up to him and threw his cloak around him. Elisha then left his oxen and ran after Elijah. Let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, he said, and then I will come to you. Go back, Elijah replied. What have I done to you? So Elisha left him and went back. He took his yoke of oxen, slaughtered them, burned the plowing equipment, cooked the meat for the people, then set out to follow Elijah and became his servant. This is our story that we're getting into. Whenever Elijah put his cloak on Elisha, that was, hey, you're being called. You are being chosen. But then whenever Elijah said, go back and kiss your mother and father goodbye, that's changing the covering. And when he burns the plow, when he slaughters the oxen, when he makes ox stew for the entire town, what is he saying? There's no going back. I've chosen who I'm aligning with. My first point is this. Alignment is a choice, and it chooses you to. The health of your soul, it's wrapped up in choices. The person you are sitting in that seat, it's a sum of all the choices you've made in your life. Me standing here is a sum of my choices. The choices we make in the alignments of life is crucial for what you do for Almighty God. And some people in situations, they arrive and they stay when you did not choose them. There's some things that choose you which you did not choose. And I want to tell you this. You did not choose that abusive dad, that condescending mom, that dishonest coach, or that manipulative boss. And if you're in a situation like that, I pray right now that God's grace will give you the strength to have victory no matter what you're facing. I'm not talking about the wrong alignments, but I'm talking about this godly alignment of Elijah choosing a protege, and the protege turns around and chooses him. There's a passage in the Bible that really makes me think of Jesus choosing us. I love it so much. It's in John chapter 15. He says to them, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. For everything that I've learned from my Father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you, and I appointed you. How many are happy in this place that Jesus Christ loved you first? That Jesus Christ chose you first. That God has a mighty plan for you. He's chosen you. He said, you're set apart. You're a city on a hill. You're chosen by Almighty God. And we're chosen, every single one of us. Elijah, chosen. Disciples, chosen. But then there's a choice. And the choice is the choice that you make who you align with. In this passage about Elijah and Elisha, Elijah gives his cloak to Elisha. You're chosen. But then the next verse, it's kind of like he says, hey, you're chosen. Here is the mantle. But he doesn't wait around like, what do you think? Are you getting? No. He walks away because the next verse is Elisha runs after Elijah to tell him that I have chosen to follow you. I'm chosen, but then you have to choose to run after being chosen with Almighty God. I want to tell you, run after the alignments of God that He's placed in your life. Run after what God has given you, what you see, how you know how to live, the alignments that you have to choose. We're chosen, but then we have to choose to run after it. Think about Jesus and the disciples. What did Jesus do? Jesus said, Hey, Peter, come follow me. You're chosen. I'll make you a fisher of men. I'll give you the best life possible. What did Peter have to do? He had to get out of the boat, and he had to choose to run after Jesus. He chose to follow him. Alignment is a choice. It chooses you, but then you choose to run after it. I, I think of, you know, Pastor Keith Craft, and he's the pastor of a church in Frisco, Texas, Elevate Life, and just an incredible man. You know him. He speaks here. Just unbelievable. 
But he talks about this story. When he was, when he was younger at Evangel College, dad was 24 years old, the youngest head football coach in college in the nation. And dad's recruiting all these guys to be on the team. He's going to the lunchroom. When he goes to speak, he's recruiting like uh, pastor's sons. I mean, everywhere, the basketball team, just he needs football players. One day on the campus, he sees this big, muscled up, 6'6 guy, Keith Kraft, and dad goes into recruiting mode. And he's like, I'm going to make you the best tight end there is. You come play football with me, and it's going to be the best thing. Keith was like, no, I'm not getting hit out there. Forget that. So he rejected it, but Keith said this. He said, I do want to align with you. He said, I want to be with you. I want to learn from you because he said, what you have, I want it. So what did he do? He would go to football practices. He's not even a football player. He would go to meetings with dad. He would preach dad's messages, sing his songs. And Keith tells his story himself. He says, this one alignment, choosing to follow dad was a crucial part in his life, being aligned where almighty God wanted him to be. So I'll ask you this question. Who are you spending your time with? Who, who are you surrounding yourself with? Because Experts say that we are the sum of the five people we spend the most time with. It's crucial for our destiny that we choose well in the alignments of life, and God will reveal the next. Hey, everyone say, choose well. My second point is your alignment precedes your assignment. I could stay here all day long. I love this so much. Your alignment it leads to your assignment. You know, too often, people run after the assignment, right? I want the thing. I want to do it. I want to get it done. But it's like, hey, who are you aligning yourself with? Sure, you want to you jump out there and do that thing, but are you surrounding yourself with the right people? Because God's word says that the alignment always precedes the assignment. The person is before the thing. So maybe Elisha had a secret desire to become a prophet. We don't know. It doesn't say that. But even if he wanted to become a prophet, he had to align and follow the prophet. He never stepped out and did anything until he followed and watched the prophet do the assignments first. And I have so many people come to me and they say, I want to prophesy. I want to preach. I want to be used by God. And those are not wrong things to say ever. I applaud that. But my response is, okay. How are you aligning yourself to prepare yourself for that? How are you serving the man or the woman of God that's doing what you desire to do? How you align yourself leads to the assignment. And I just, I think about if, if you want to be a plumber and you just hung out with musicians all day long, that's ridiculous. Why? Because in order to become a plumber, you literally have to spend hundreds of Thousands of hours with a master plumber in order to become a plumber yourself. Align yourself, and then it turns into the assignment that Almighty God has for you. And here's the thing. He says, I'm aligning with you. And then in the assignment, God does even greater things than the one that you follow. Why? Because Elisha was given a double portion Meaning there's exactly, go back and count it yourself, twice as many miracles in your Bible that Elisha did compared to Elijah. God does greater things. Think about the disciples. Jesus came to the disciples and said, yes, you're following me. Yes, you've aligned yourself. But Jesus said, all the things that I have done, the things I have done, assignment, you will do greater things. And that is your promise. Your alignment leads to a great assignment. I, I'm thinking of these incredible guys. I had the best time with you guys yesterday at this encounter. It was just, it was life transforming. But here's the thing. Before every encounter, I get with the leaders and talk to all of the guys that are going. And I'll tell them this. There's excuse after excuse. And the spiritual warfare that happens right before you go will be that you don't need to have it, that you don't need to go, that you don't need to attend the encounter. Sure enough, I talked to a lot of you, the spiritual warfare, but you guys fought through it, and God met us. 
and the alignment already, the assignments of God, it's just glorious what God's doing. I think of SC College, and SC College is Shreveport Community College, our college here, a fully accredited college through Southeastern University. And Sarah and I made this, uh, made this declaration. We want to be lifelong learners. What is that? Well, we want to align ourselves with learning. For, we're in school right now. But thinking about all of the different students that are in SC College, some of them are right out of high school, but most of them are full-grown people with kids, full-time jobs, and just a lot going on. But this is how I say it. Well, you can either align and you can spend your time getting degrees on Netflix, getting all the series and everything in, or you can align yourself with your free time and have degrees with what God wants you to do. Have spirit-filled professors, one of the fastest-growing colleges in the nation, Southeastern. And what happens? Well, you align and your assignment gets bigger. I think of Heather Bryant. Heather Bryant's one of our students at SC College. She has two beautiful kids, and she has a full-time job here at Evangel. Well, she said, you know what? I'm aligning with SC College, and she's about to get her degree at SC College, but the alignment, it's led to a great assignment. She takes a group from SC Church, and they go downtown. They go to these different hotels and places, people that are in need, hurting, and she is a voice to the lost, bringing the hurting in. Why? Because the alignment leads to a great assignment. Put your hands together for Heather right now. Isn't that amazing? I'm reminded of uh, Quentin Light. I love Quentin. He's one of my best friends. And he's the head of Eagle Creek Recovery Center. Full-time job at Eagle Creek. Full-time job at the church. But he said, I'm aligning with SC College, and I'm getting my degree. So what happened? Last year, he was the first SC College student to graduate and get his degree. He's five months away from getting his master's degree, and he's not stopping there. He's getting his doctorate. Put your hands together for Quentin. I'm telling you. We got a choice who we align with, what we align with, and it leads to the divine assignment that God wants you to do. So I want to move on to my next point. It says that Elisha... He said, I want to kiss my mother and father goodbye. Okay, let me go back and kiss my mom and dad goodbye. Now, I want to stop here because this is, this is very significant. Anytime you see parents in the Bible, it represents a covering and it represents a protection. Okay, he was saying this. He was saying, I'm changing my alignment from your covering now I'm going into Elijah's covering. And my third point is this. Alignment provides cover. Alignment provides cover. You remember a few weeks ago, I preached from the passage in 1 Peter about how to love each other with all your heart. And the passage said this. It said, love covers a multitude of sins. In that message, I told you three things that covering could mean. And one of them was this. Providing protection. And when you align properly, you have cover, but you have protection in the house and in the relationship with Almighty God. Apparent covering, it represents protection. And for those of you, whenever you hear parents, it, it puts a sour taste in your mouth. Because when you went home as a child, it wasn't a place of protection. Maybe right now you're in a, a place where you don't want to go home. Once again, I'll, I want to pray for you that God will heal you. And give you the strength to have victory in what you're facing. But when I say parents right now, I want you to change it. I want you to think of a place of protection, a place of covering. I love the story of Gideon in the Bible. How many of you know the story of Gideon in the Bible? So the story of Gideon, um, he led an army of 300 men. And they defeated 300,000. I'm talking this guy was a dude. He, he did the deal. But before he did that, he was a coward. I mean, he was, he was scared to death. God called him, so he wanted to step out and do what God called him to do. He said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to abolish and smash all of the idols of Baal. But he thought about it. If I do it during the day, 
some people are going to be pretty mad. So he snuck out in the middle of the night and started just bashing all the idols of Baal. And then after he did, he said, everyone's going to be pretty mad at me in the morning. So he ran to his father's house and he hid. Well, that very next day, sure enough, he was right. The, the people came knocking on his door. He was in his parents' house. And I, I see this kind of like a movie whenever the dad answers the door and he's like the rock. He stands out there and all the townspeople are there and they're just with pitchforks and they want to take Gideon. And the dad says, Bell has a problem with me. Bell can take it up with me. And he said, if y'all have a problem with me, you're going through me. Come get you some. I'll smoke you right now. That's not what the Bible says, but that's my own interpretation. He stood firm. What did he do? He protected. He covered his son. And this is what I'm saying. Your alignment, sometimes it's too much for you to bear. Sometimes it's overwhelming. And I want to tell you, when it's overwhelming, when you feel like you're being defeated, run to the house of God. Because if you run to the house of God, God will be your cover. God will be your strength. God will be the one that gives you the protection in every area of your life. Don't trust what you've ran to so many times and it's failed you over and over and over again. Been there, done that. No, if you're struggling, run to the house of God. Run to the children of God. Run to the Bible. Get in prayer and God will protect you. God will cover you and he'll give you love like you can never imagine. Come on, give God some praise right now if you love him. God's covering is the best thing we can do. Did I have some echo on my voice there for a second? Felt like I had some echo. Was, thank you for helping me up in the booth. That was wonderful. My last point is this. Alignment sets you up for your end game. Alignment Set you up for your end game. Elisha told Elijah, I'm sticking with you no matter what. Three different times in the Bible, Elijah said, stay back, Elisha. And Elisha said, I'm not staying back, I'm with you. Stay back, Elisha. No, forget that. I'm not missing nothing. Stay back. I'm right here. I want to tell you this. You'll have excuse after excuse not to align with the house of God not to bring your children to the house of God, not to be a man, a woman that serves, that does things God's way. There are great excuses, but daily, we've got to decide, I'm a man, I'm a woman of God. My family is going to serve Almighty God. I'm having a great end game in the name of Jesus. What's an end game? Well, I've been talking to a lot of you, and I want to invite Alex up here right now. And a lot of us, are thinking about the end game more than ever. Why? Because of situations and things that have been happening around us. How are you going to end life in the best way? And an end game, it, it talks about in a chess game. If, if you're in a chess game, and if you start the game, I mean, it, it begins and the pawns are taken away. The end game is the very end of the chess game. When all the first pawns and different pieces have been eliminated, the end game it's in the chess game where it's the last moves that set up the victory in the game. And I want to tell you this, that God, if you align yourself with Almighty God, yes, you'll live a life of great assignments, but you will finish well with Almighty God. I think about the story of Elisha, and I think this is so monumental with, with Elisha because he's, he's following, he's understanding, but then came a day when Elisha is standing there with Elijah, all of a sudden, chariots of fire manifest. Can you imagine seeing that? I mean, that would be unbelievable. Chariots of fire come, and they pick up Elijah, and then just, whoop, whoop, gone. Disappears, and Elisha's standing there, but then his mantle, his cloak falls to the ground. Elisha comes over, picks it up and as he picks it up he began his end game why because no longer was was he the one following but he took the place of leading and as he led others followed him and the bible says this he did twice as many miracles 
as Elijah. That's, that's a great end game. But what you do for Almighty God, like Dad says, they're immortal moments. They never die. The last miracle that Elisha did, it was after he died. Why? Because what you do for God, it lives on. It goes to your children and your children's children. It never falls to the ground. It's the greatest end game because it goes on for eternity. But I want to tell you this. God wants you to end well. And God wants you to live well. And God wants you to take it to the very end. Choose God. Run after God. Have a divine assignment. Say, God, I want your covering. But God, in everything, I want to end well in the name of Jesus. Stand to your feet right now in this sovereignty of this moment. I'm reminded of the disciples. The disciples followed Jesus, right? They saw Jesus die on the cross. He rose on the third day. He appeared to them, risen Savior. And then after it was all said and done, they're around him on the mount of olives. And Jesus gives them this great commission. Go into all the world, preach the gospel, but I'm going to send you a helper, one that comes alongside of you. What happens? He begins to ascend. He's going into heaven, then he's gone. The disciples stand there, and they're looking in amazement, and the angel comes and says, why are you standing here? It's time to go for your end game. It's time for your assignment. Go wait in the upper room. As they waited in the upper room, what happened? The Holy Spirit fell. The Holy Spirit filled them, and they carried on the gospel, and we're in this meeting today. Why? Because of those original 12, the gospel's still going. The end game, it never ends. So today, as I look out and I look at you, I just, I want you to assess your own life. What are you choosing to align yourself with? Are you choosing the one that chose you? Are you chasing after things that will fall to the ground and be detrimental for nothing? The first alignment that we have to have is in our life. We gotta give Jesus Christ our lives. I, I, wanna, I wanna ask you to do something right now and I'm gonna ask that you turn to your right and to your left when I give you the signal. And I want you to say, are you absolutely sure your life is right with God? I don't care if that person's the best Christian you know. I want you to ask him right and left. I don't care if you know him or not. Are you absolutely sure your life is right with God? If either person says no, I want the person that asked and the person that answered, I want you to come down here. It's time to get in the right alignment with Almighty God. So when I give you the signal, I want you to turn to your right and to your left. And I want you to say, are you absolutely sure your life is right with God? And we've got to be honest. No one's going to lie to the Holy Spirit in this place. Today is the day of your salvation. Why? Because we're starting our end game. We're getting our assignments. We have our covenant. If that person says no, I want the person that asked and the one that answered, I want you to come together down to this front. And I want to pray with you. Today is going to be a monumental day. Come on, bow your heads. I want to pray for us. God, thank you for this day. God, thank you that you've chosen us. God, thank you that you first loved us. And God, we choose you. We choose to run after you. We choose to love you. And today, as we have this altar call, God, I pray that we're honest. And those of us that need to get right with you, God, I pray that we give you our lives today. Come on, right now, I want you to turn to your right and to your left. Right now, I want you to ask, are you absolutely sure your life is right with God? If that person says no, as we sing this song, I want you to come down to the front. Come on, let's sing together.
Thank you, Jesus. This is a monumental day. I want every one of you to look at me and I want you to listen to me. This, this is a pivotal day. I'm saying I've decided that I am following Jesus. And just like Elisha, he, he burned the plow. He killed his oxen. He said, I'm not even making it. We're deciding we're following Jesus today. And there's no turning back. This alignment, it's not just walking through the motions. This is power coming in your life. This is healing your soul. This is soul health like never before. I want you to bow your heads with me. And I want you to repeat this after me. Say, Jesus, come into my life. I believe you died on the cross and you rose on the third day. Forgive me of my sins, Jesus. I want to align myself with you. Give me a healthy soul, Jesus. I want to love you well. God, I thank you for every man, woman, and child in this place. God, I thank you for this day. We give this day to you. We surrender this day to you. God, I thank you for the decisions that are being made here at the altar, the decisions that are being made at the seats right now. And right now, church, I just want you to think of your next step, how you can align with Jesus even more, how you can take that next step towards Jesus. God, I pray as we think of this next step, how we can align toward you, how we can run towards you, God, through that. I pray for covering. I pray for assignments. I pray for fulfillment. I pray for love. I pray for grace. And I know this, that the best is yet to come for Streetport Community Church and every man, woman, and child in this place. We thank you, God. We want to love you well, and we lift your name up. We exalt your name, Jesus. In your name we pray, and everybody stand. Hey, come on, give God some praise today. Give God some praise for everyone that made a decision today.